Tomorrow is the big day. It might drop sometime tonight or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but Dragon Age the Veilguard, the official tombstone for Bioware. Even though it's it's interesting, right? And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but does everybody forget, right? Because there's some cope posts that are out there, people seeing all the clips that are out there. And well, actually, I ended up finding some more riveting gameplay that is out there. And I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, but here you have, yeah, some state-of-the-art puzzles that are out there. And bro, I mean, these are real, these are real old brain ticklers that are going on so you got a key and you got a porthole that's over there and obviously you got to go over and you got to figure out okay where am I going to put this key what, what's going to happen how am I going to get across this gorge I just need to go ahead and place it right there and oh there we go now we have a bridge that's built some real riveting gameplay from the guys we used to have complex relationship systems and not like the ones that are in Dragon Age the Veilguard but just ones that if you didn't engage with them your comrades on your ship would end up dead before you could even partake the mission at the end of mass effect 2 or the branching paths in mass effect 1 rallying your troops in mass effect 3 but that's that's what they've been reduced down to like we've seen the dialogue we heard the voice acting yesterday we've seen some of the cringy quests and i can imagine it's only going to get worse from there and bro we're going to be talking about this one for a while because the disparate opinions between the review class and the people that are actually playing it early and in earnest it's it's a massive gap that I haven't seen in the only analogous situation that I can see is the acolyte because outside of some fringe weirdos I don't see anybody really defending this it's crap it's wholesale crap no because it's the right brand of crap for the critics well they can go ahead and yeah astroturf some reviews and get some faux hype for this so it can get some meaningless awards so when ultimately they have to do a sony and firewalk studios and say oopsie daisy bioware's legacy has now been flushed down the toilet but hey we have so many game awards it doesn't matter we may have lost the battle but we won the war with dignity Ugh. Let's see, they're astroturfing reviews. Well, I've seen a little bit of this, okay? It could make some sense, but apparently Grums is out on the case. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah, uh, Grums is accusing Bioware of astroturfing reviews for its upcoming Dragon Age The Veilguard game. Yeah, it's interesting because there, there are some early reviews that are coming out, okay? A Skill Ups review, shout out to them that just absolutely torched the game. Mr. Maddie Plays, somebody who's generally positive, even of bad games. Like, he didn't even have a scathing review of Star Wars Outlaws, but that game's a uh, firm three which is kind of what this game's also looking like as well um he's been drug into some kind of crazy conspiracy theory based on some clips from his editors from a review and there's some out of work autistics that are down there the cancellation minds trying to figure out oh no he's connected to this stuff and frankly i don't know and i really don't care because whenever you're critical of bad stuff, there there are lifeless freaks on the internet. Some real grassless behavior going on. And hell, I experienced quite a bit of it. If you if you have the dislike extension, just go and take a look at uh, specifically the Agatha All Along videos. It's like that show is really bad. Okay, the show is really bad, but I only talk about some clips, a little bit of writing that I'm aware of, and how poorly it's viewing figures are being reported like i don't say anything else over the top of it no no no. those freaks come out in droves and downvote the shit out of it and frankly i don't really care because the show is bad and everybody's gonna forget it because what is it i think the two-part finale drops tonight then after that nobody's gonna remember that shit like even the setup for the vision show that's gonna be coming out nobody's even gonna remember agatha all along they're just gonna go who did the babysitter for the fantastic I, that's fan whatever bro i don't what are you saying but i'm sure that two-part finale is gonna be hot garbage like everybody thought that secret invasion was gonna be disposable but then it set up the most powerful being in all of marvel and thoroughly destroyed the character of nick fury better than spiteful x even could anyways back to the veil guard We're talking about too many abominations and boy the the modern media landscape is just a wash with filth but let's focus a little bit here uh grums's uh, accusations come in the wake of youtubers uh, fextra life accusing bioware of attempting to manipulate reviews by not handing out review codes to creators critical of the game in a video uploaded Oh yeah, uploaded to YouTube, Fixed Your Life, uh, observed a number of potential players expressed uh, they would wait for reviews uh, before they decided to purchase the game. Uh, then they noted that EA likely observed this too and said, EA's uh, marketing team probably saw this and decided that they needed to make a review as positive as possible, trying to exclude those that might give the game a 7 or 8 while also reaching out, finding press and content creators that would maybe give the game a 9 or above. Just think about this for a second if you're EA. 
or if you're on the EA end and you're trying to manipulate review scores because you want high review scores, uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, hand it out to the likes of Eurogamer that gave it a perfect 10. And hell, yesterday we ran through the list of the different establishment outlets and there was nothing lower than uh, 80%. It's crazy what's going on in the establishment side of this. That's why... That's why I kind of want to play this hands-on. It's just, I cannot find a cheap key that's out there. It's kind of crazy, too, because I guess this is anecdotal evidence or anything like that. Like, I, I when I PC game or something like that, like, I want to find the best deal possible. If it's on Steam on a sale, I'll go with that one. If it's off on somebody else's launcher, I don't really care. I'm not going to be one of those moral effers that are out there by saying, oh, oh, I'm not going to install Chinese spyware on my computer. It's like, bro, if the Chinese really want to know your search results, they'll just go ahead and get it through any other other means that's out there don't try to say that oh i won't i won't install i won't install the epic games launcher because i am a man of principle it's like shut your mouth you goddamn degenerate but it's funny it's funny because i was just looking i was just looking for a veil guard key not all that thoroughly or anything like that but most of the sites that i normally go to green man gaming king Gwyn, uh what is it cd keys or something like that a bunch of the different sites that are out there nobody has and this is weird because even black myth wukong uh sparking zero the dragon ball game that just came out that did massive numbers all of those prior to release i didn't buy any of them but i was observing this as well they all had a multitude of keys that were out there for you to purchase on the cheap but that's just not the case with dragon age it's uh it's an interesting phenomenon don't necessarily know what to make of it but we'll see what happens after release if the market gets flooded or not uh yeah speaking about early reviews uh you're going to research press and content creators and what do they usually give oh uh to games score wise and give your general idea of how they're going to review your game yeah because when it comes to video games and there's a big reason why i've been focusing on this so much this year is because there is definitely and it's a lot like those marvel shills that are out there that are just hoping that big daddy disney you know just eventually notices them there ooh, ooh senpai marvel they're just those type of people especially the acolyte thugs that are out there that are trying to bully people that were mean to their bad show gaming in general is festoon with idiots suffering from various levels of toxic positivity and it is really well it's i would say it's a big reason why the industry is in the shape that it's in right now is because nobody has the cojones to simply say when a game is bad and give it a proper rating because at this point in time a bad game is a seven it's like bro if you're rating out of a hundred okay you might be on to something but a seven in any other walk of life i mean seven's a bad bitch seven's a decent movie Seven is an album you might keep in your vehicle for a week or two, but it seems to be exclusive to games where a bad game is seven, a decent game is an eight, a good game is a nine, and one of your best games of the year is a perfect 10. Now, I, I don't really have a problem if you're consistent when it comes to that scale. It's just for the uninitiated, it makes it appear the games are better or worse than they're actually being presented as, and well, it's one of the many reasons that people don't trust establishment games journals. After noticing how fixed your life, yeah, never gives nines or tens, he said, okay, you're about to get a bunch of reviews that have been curated by the publisher for their likelihood of being extremely positive in an attempt to manipulate your view of Dragon Age of Elgard. Uh, they want you to think that this is universal consensus and that the game is amazing, thereby convincing you that you should try it, but also influencing future review scores uh, as it's difficult to be the outlier. If you've ever done a review for a game or something, you'll realize that you're the oh oh if you're uh, the only one uh, giving a high review and everyone else is giving it a low review score it's difficult yeah uh the name grace randolph immediately comes to mind so she didn't want to give because she's a rotten tomatoes approved critic she didn't want to give a rotten tomato to the suicide squad uh, the james gunn duration that came out in 2021 i think yeah she didn't want to do that because well she didn't want to negatively affect the review score and she didn't think that it would all ultimately matter that's the way that some of these people think like it's crazy it's like your job is to review but because you want access all the time like there's no problem with overt and uh under deserved praise being heaped out there which is i think a big contributor as to why dragon age looks so shit why you have dialogue and conversation choices that read like they're out of a gender studies book is because nobody was told no your idea is dumb no this is not going into a triple a game no this wouldn't even make it into an indie game your ideas are poor go back and work on it a little bit harder but nobody wants to be mean because these hr departments from these people that can go ahead and play victim cards uh he, he made fun of me because i'm a woman or identify as it on the day or oh oh that mean my mean boss was only mean to me because i'm black 
these are the cultures that are fostered at these AAA studios. And that's why Ubisoft has had zero innovation over the past decade. And that's why EA is on the brink of shutting down the likes of Bioware and they haven't produced a truly well-received banger from gamers since Battlefield 1. That's why Sony and Microsoft are shutting down so many studios. The Eastern side of things, that's a little bit of a different story where you have these tight-knit corporate cultures where, yeah, you have the ability to criticize and go in deep on work. But no, over here in the West, you have the Veil Guard as the epitome of masterful writing. I haven't seen this level of craftsmanship and storytelling since Fyodor. Yes, Dostoevsky, you'd have to kill me. It's like, okay, I could see how you eventually get there after a long line of dialogue options, okay? And then this, this would, depending on how you answer the question, Question, this would result in either combat or if, if this was the Mass Effect side of things, if your Paragon or Renegade attributes or your levels were high enough, you could just, you know, pull the trigger on either side. I think Paragon was on right and Renegade was on left. And you could resolve the conversation either amicably or Shepard putting one between somebody's eyes. But no, no, no. On the Dragon Age side of things, you can go, there's got to be another way, which, okay, th that's not too bad. Uh, if it's necessary okay so there you got kind of your paragon and you've got your renegade answers okay th that's not too bad and then you got the middle of the road with an oof they unironically put oof in their game huh yeah that's interesting yeah ign 9 out of 10 which is exactly why i think uh our friends pointing out the astroturf reviews definitely have a point but yeah enjoyable action combat a fantastic cast of allies yes see that it's a lot of allyship going on uh, with sweeping story arcs all their own top-notch cinematics and moving nuanced character writing bro we've seen some of the character writing that ain't it are the wings on which this triumphant dragon soars if we never get another dragon age game at least it got to go out on a high note what if we never get another dragon age game are you are you would Admitting to something? Do you guys kind of know what's going to be going on here? Okay, do you, do you are you kind of like Bioware realizing that, oh shit, this is going to be a disaster? And uh, if we somehow manage, if we somehow manage to make a Mass Effect 5, which, bro, they should have been shut down after Mass Effect 4. Okay, Andromeda? Here's the thing, man. I've... Oh boy, I haven't gone back to it in... When did that game come out? 2016? 2018? Like, I, I stopped playing games for years after that one. Because I'm a big Mass Effect fan. Trilogy is great. I'm a, I'm a number three apologist. But Andromeda almost sapped the life, or rather, the will to live out of me. At least when it came to living in the space of modern gaming. I regret not speaking up earlier back then. Because all of the problems that that game has, at least from what I can remember... Who knows, maybe my mind is even more warped by that experience than I remember. But perhaps if more people were standing up and the same ones that are talking about this stuff right now were saying this about Andromeda, we wouldn't be dealing with the Veil Guard. We would still have Dreadwolf or maybe Dragon Age 4 would have came out, you know, years ago instead of this beleaguered, belabored development cycle that everybody knows is a disaster months, weeks, years before release. And here we are a couple of days, a day removed from its drop. And you've got, yes, Mass Effect 5 game director appears to already be doing damage control after Dragon Age of Elgard backlash. Yes, says the game will keep photorealistic art style. Now, there are a multitude of reasons that you might be skeptical as to the quality of Dragon Age of the Veil Guard, but I would think art design is it's kind of low on that list. Like, obviously, you know, character designs, dialogue, story, gameplay, that's, that's pretty high up there. But yeah, the art design is definitely something that is left to be desired. But w even when you take a look at this, it's like, it looks functional. It's, it's not great. Everybody kind of looks like a Fortnite character. And in general, that I can imagine you could probably chalk that up to some not so great shaders. And uh, there's probably some mods that could theoretically be placed over the top of that to make it a little bit more palatable. But photorealistic art style. I mean, bro, who's working on this? Who's the story consultant? Do you have any consultancy firms working on this? Are there any people that worked on the original trilogy still attached to this project? Because I don't care how the game looks. It's how does it play? How is it written? Because there's a big reason that everybody looked and turned at Bioware and went, ooh, God, something awful is happening here. It wasn't because Anthem wasn't fun to play. It's because it was devoid of content and it was a disgusting, buggy mess that you promised to fix and then eventually abandoned. The same thing happened with Mass Effect Andromeda. There were big plans for that one. Oh, there was a big old DLC season that was going to be coming. Oh, there's going to be big season pass because you know the way that EA likes to monetize every single one of their products. But nope, that support was dropped immediately. Bioware should have been shut down years ago at this point in time. 
time. And yeah, if they end up going the way of Firewalk Studios and closing down in a couple of months post-launch of their final game, nobody's going to shed a tear at this point in time because this isn't the Bioware that did Mass Effect. This isn't the Bioware that made Jade Empire, Knights of the Old Republic. This is the Bioware who was led by a genderqueer transomancer. This is the Bioware that celebrates trans day of awareness as opposed to celebrating good quality storytelling and consequential player choices. It's going to be a disaster. It's going to break a lot of people's hearts, but I personally, I'm looking forward to playing the Veil Garden. If I can find myself a key, I'll find a way to stream this shit because I can imagine because what we've seen so far, I could only think and judging by some of those clips that we've been seeing, that's from the early game. I would imagine that the real peak cringe will come a little bit deeper into that game. So this one's going to be fun to talk about for a very, very long time. So with all that said, thank you all very much for Thank you all very much. That's not a sentence. Now here I am speaking like the way that the Dragon Age of Veilguard is written, but I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.